Hey, what's going on guys? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics and today we're going to be talking about AutoMA for GE CT scanners. All right, so if you're watching this video, you probably have a GE CT scanner or you're looking at getting a GE CT scanner and are curious about what auto MA is, what smart MA is, what's the difference between those two things, and how do you use them whenever you're scanning patients, and what does noise index mean, and how to use them when you're scanning CT patients. So we're gonna cover everything that you need to know about auto MA and smart MA. So before we get too far into this, I will use auto MA and smart MA sort of interchangeably uh, to mean GE's version of automated exposure control or tube current modulation, they are different and we're going to talk about the differences. So when we're using auto MA, we're using a GE's version of tube current modulation. Tube current modulation is using the technology in the scanner to help us better scan our patients so that they get the right dose and we have consistent image quality. When we're scanning patients, CT patients, our patients come in all shapes and sizes. And so whenever we're scanning large patients, we may need to apply more mass, more radiation dose for those patients. And when we're scanning smaller patients, we can get away with using less radiation dose and produce the same uh, image quality. AutoMA is a tool for us to do that. With AutoMA, we're able to modulate the dose in the Z axis. So as we scan the patient, from head to toe, the tube current is going to modulate based on the size, shape, and density of the material that you're going through. So if you're scanning through, say, the chest, we may be able to use a lower MA, whereas if we're scanning through the abdomen and pelvis, we may need to use a higher MA. So auto MA is going to automatically adjust the amount of MA that's used as you're scanning from the chest into the abdomen. Smart MA is a rotational MA, so it allows the scanner to change the MA in the X and Y planes. So as the tube rotates around the patient, the MA is going to modulate up and down based on whether or not there's more, uh, more anatomy to penetrate in the anterior projection versus the lateral projections. So to sort of summarize that, Auto MA is only in the Z direction, so it's a limited version of uh, tube current modulation, whereas if you turn on Smart MA, you get modulation in all three planes, the X, Y, and Z plane. With either of these features enabled, it's important for you to isocenter the patient. The reason that it's important to isocenter is because we want to have an accurate size shape model for the patient, and that's because Auto MA is going to use your scout as well as the noise index, those two values together to calculate how much MA it should, the scanner should use as it scans through the patient. So for the scanner to calculate how much MA to use, I mentioned the noise index. What is the noise index? Well, before we get to noise index, let's talk a little bit about noise. Noise is going to be inversely related to the number of x-rays, and we can think of x-rays and MA as sort of being equivalent to each other. And so as we drive up our MA, or we produce more x-rays, we're going to decrease the amount of noise in our image or create better images. The opposite of that is also true. If we decrease the amount of x-rays or decrease our MA, we will drive up the noise and create uh, noisier images. So the noise index is going to approximately equal the noise or the standard deviation in the central region of an image using a standard or uniform phantom. So with your patient images, you can draw a region of interest in the center of the image and that noise index or the, or the standard deviation should closely uh, mimic your noise index that was set for the scan. The one other caveat to know about auto MA or smart MA is that that noise index value, it's going to be set for the first perspective reconstructed image series. So you want to set your noise index values 
no understanding what that first reconstructed slice uh, thickness is. So if it's two and a half millimeters or five millimeters, you're going to want to set that noise index based on the slice thickness. So for example, if you have a noise index of 10, and the first reconstructed image series is in a five mil is a five millimeter, then your noise index or the standard deviation in that five millimeter slice should approximate uh, or should be close to 10. But if your first reconstructed image is in a two and a half or a 0.625, then whenever auto MA is calculating how much MA to use, it's going to use a lot more MA to account for the loss in data in the thinner slices. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like on a GE scanner. Okay, so we can see on this scanner that Auto MA is turned on, Smart MA is not turned on. So if you want to turn on Smart MA, you can just click the button to turn on Smart MA. And we show the reference noise index as well as the noise index. The reference noise index is the default noise index for a given protocol, whereas the noise index over here is the noise index that's going to be applied for that specific scan or patient. We also have dose steps. The dose steps will increase or decrease the noise index by about 5% and then have an opposite effect of about 10% on the MA. So you can click either of these buttons, the up or down on the dose steps, and see how that changes the noise index compared to the reference noise index. You'll also note on here that you have an MA range of a minimum and a maximum. The really nice thing about this that GE does is applying that maximum MA so that you know that you'll never exceed a particular CTDI or radiation dose for a given patient. You do want to pay attention to the MA that is given to the patient or, this, or the resultant CTDI whenever you're doing dose reviews to make sure that you're not maxing out this MA on every single patient. That's one of the things that we see quite frequently is that we'll see auto MA is being used, but every patient gets the maximum dose. So that's something to just keep an eye on whenever you're setting your protocols. And if you ever need to flip over to a manual MA, you can turn on the manual MA and then enter in the value of the MA that you want to apply for the scan. And that will turn off both auto MA and smart MA. So GE does have some newer versions of software. While they look different, the all of the metrics, they're called the same thing and they work in, in the same way. So you can just take take these concepts here that we're showing and you can apply that to their newer versions of software and it should work just the same. And that pretty much covers the basics of auto MA and smart MA, how the noise index works, what noise index means, how to set your MA range and how to use auto MA and smart MA to benefit your patients, make sure that they're getting the right radiation dose, you're producing consistent image quality from patient to patient and providing good care to your patients. If you have questions about auto MA, smart MA, or how to current modulation works for GE scanners, feel free to shoot us a note, drop us a comment, and let us know how we can help you.